Hello and welcome back to All The Gear Some Idea. So today you join me looking at a problem with the trigger. So at the end of the last video where we fitted the Twisted Brothers seat, I mentioned that I'd ridden the bike and unfortunately it had broken down or we had a problem at least. Now I had two problems. The first time I took the bike out, <clears throat> it was fine. Until I went to go onto a dual carriageway and I noticed it started to misfire. <laughs> And it smelled really fuely, and there was smoke from the exhaust, the headers. Uh, I managed to get to Matt's uh, with 2T's uh, garage and found that fuel, when trying to start it again, was pouring out of the exhaust. Um, so that indicated it was a fueling problem. Now, it's had temp sensor fitted, and that's normally an indication that it's a temp sensor when there's fuel coming out of the headers. Unfortunately, it was not that. It was an injector that was stuck open. Now, I've got some footage which I will input in a second. Um, the injectors are brand new. Um, they were bought uh, from a, a known company. Um, and I have to say, the custom service from that company, spot on, uh, sent them the video of what I was having a problem with. Uh, the injectors were out of the bike by just priming the ignition so that the fuel pump runs. Fuel was pouring out of cylinder one. It just continuous until there's no pressure left. Uh, so I contacted them and without any hesitation, they sent me a brand new injector. Uh, I've inspected the injector. I can't see anything wrong with it. I just know that when you try and blow for it, it's stuck open. Uh, so it is what it is at the end of the day. You know, we're dealing with parts that aren't potentially genuine parts. Um, but that was Tom from K Parts Holland. So fair play for you know, going through the warranty process and not actually asking many questions. I sent the video, explained what the problem was, sent me a new one. So really over the moon with how that went. So there's no there's no slander, there's no nothing here. It is purely a thank you very much for being such a genuine um, company and trusting the people that are buying parts from you. Um, I've recommended you to friends, I've recommended you to people online, um, and obviously I'm now recommending you in videos as well. So thank you very much. That was one, and the video will be inputted now. So as you can see, fuel is just straight out. So I've still got my old injectors. So what I then did was fitted uh, in the meantime, so I could still use the bike because I want to. I want to put some miles in it. I want to ride it. It's taken me a long time to get to this point. Um, I fitted an old one that worked and it tested all okay. Um, decided to go out with Lee um, on his bike uh, towards the seaside, and everything was going perfect until it decided to just literally cut out on me. It just died. Um, I've got the footage which I insert now. As you can see, riding along, and all of a sudden the revs just drop. Um, now, it, it is what it is at the end of the day. I thought maybe it was something that I had done with a, a loose connection or something along those lines. The bike would still try to start. Uh, you'd hold the starter button down, it would turn over, it would fire up, and it would, it, would, it would run. And then, like a switch, it would just turn off. Uh, now, obviously, the bike was hot, so we ended up, uh, I ended up pushing it uh, a distance, and I was very out of breath by the end of it, um, which is where I got some nice photos uh, of the bike, sat in the middle of nowhere. Um, and I had a little play around with it, and I, I couldn't get it going again, so I had to get recovered home, which was I wasn't best pleased about, but it, it is what it is at the end of the day. So I went through everything again. I basically went through the video that I have already done on the K100 diagnosis uh, video. But there is one thing I didn't test on that video, and that is the trigger. Uh, I don't know why I didn't test it. I don't know. I, I've no idea why I haven't replaced it. Um, it's been out, but I've just never looked at it in a way of replacing it before. And it is a common point uh, looking into it on these bikes that can cause them to have running problems. Um, so what we're going to do today is I've got it on the bench over here, the old one. I've got a battery and some wiring. and I'm going to show you how you can test to see if yours is working. Um, I don't know if there's any difference to it slightly works or not. As far as I can tell, they either work or they don't work. And that's how I assume that it will be anyway. Um, I have also got some uh, repair um, hall sensors from AliExpress, which I'm going to try and make a good sensor um, 
or good trigger out of those parts. So I will, in theory, have a brand new one ready to go. I did buy one uh, online. That it, and it wasn't from K Parts Holland. Uh, it was just online. Uh, that came with a six-month warranty. I could have bought a brand new one for twice the price, but because I wanted to go down the route of trying to repair it, I thought let's just go for the the other one. I can keep one aside as a spare. And yeah, so let's get into testing the trigger and going through how how we're going to know if it's working or not working. Okay, so what we have is this is the plug. So you've got pin one, two, three, four, and five. And we've got the earth for an LED light, which is this one. This is a brake light I'm not using. So the earth there to one, two, to pin two. Three is a live into this. We've also got the live into here, running to my battery. And then we've got the earth on four. Now this comes to this. So I'll try and make it a little bit easier to understand. We've got a positive to the battery, but we've also got from the battery a positive here. So you've got live, earth, negative, but you need to make sure you give this a separate live that will come from it. So as you can see, we've got three wires there. Two are linked, so this one and this one are linked, and then the other one just goes straight to the battery. I will link in the Google Drive, there's a, a thing in there that says about how to do this. This is a, a video on how to do it. We've then got your earth going straight to the earth of the battery. Now, my light is lit up. So I believe we're testing the top hall sensor at the moment with pin two. So what you need to do to test this is I've got some feeler blades. I'm literally gonna break the circuit. So once you go through that and you break it, basically what you've got where your trigger sits, there's a cup that sits around this and it's got a cutout in it. Every time that cutout comes along and the engine spins, it does that. So that's what the engine is seeing and every time it lights up, it's going spark, spark, spark. Now, it's also doing that with the fuel as well. So what I found with mine was I had a spark plug tester on cylinder one and it worked fine. As you can see, it's working fine. But what I didn't do at the time was test sub, uh, spark plug two. Spark plug two wasn't working unknown to me. Well, that would be this side. So back to this plug here, got one, two, three, four, five. So two and five, two is this one, five is this one. So we pull this out and put this one, the earth of the LED, into that one. So I'm hoping you saw that was lit up then. And then as I broke the circuit, it stopped. which is a good indication that that's the problem I was having. There you go, it's lit up now. So if I put this back in there and then pull it out, it's not instant for it to come back to life again. It's a very slow return, so it should be like the other one. Where it's on and off every time you do it. So that would explain as to why I was turning it over. And while turning it over, every now and again it would try and fire because it's doing its thing but as you can see I haven't even touched it that time and it's turned itself off so as that gets hot it will start to give you more problems so it could be this would be a sign that it's starting to break up so I'm, I don't know what it is that's causing it to do that but if you can follow the instructions earth positive and then you've got your LED here and you have something metal to break the circuit that is how you test your trigger <clears throat> okay so that is how you test the trigger now fitting it is very simple it's the cover at the front of the engine the t cover um i basically tried to line it up with where it was before there's a little like half moon cut out um and and just fitted it basically uh, it's two allen keys holding it in 
and follow the plug up to that plug that we were testing it at. So hopefully this has been some sort of help to somebody about how to test for the trigger. Uh, and you can see that mine was clearly faulting. Uh, once I've been doing stuff here, I've been watching it, I've left it all wired in, and every now and again the light will come on and it will come off. So every time it, the light comes on, it would induce a spark into the system and inject some fuel, uh, obviously at the complete wrong times. So it does now run, which it did not do on this day. So there we go, it's all sorted. So hopefully this video would have been some help to somebody. I know it's not very long. I know it's not changing the trigger itself, but at least if you've got a problem, you might have a better understanding of how to test the trigger yourself. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.